Welcome back and uh, monitoring, like you earlier said, monitoring the situation or the crisis in Ukraine and the military uh, invasion and the military assault that was taken from Russia over Ukraine. Uh, with us live over the phone is engineer Hassan Shaban, our political analyst. Good morning, engineer Shaban. Good morning, Dean. How are you this morning? I'm fine. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, we need to also to take a comprehensive look over the situation in Ukraine and the military uh, assault that was taken earlier. Um, um, we need to uh, talk first about uh, the, um, um, of course, Egypt is monitoring the situation in Ukraine and assessing uh, uh, the whole situation and stands from distance, but also uh, people are worldwide talking about the repercussions of that particular crisis in Ukraine. But Egypt says no worries over Suez Canal amid Russian-Ukrainian standoff. How do you assess the Russian uh, invasion impact on global uh, navigation? Well, let, allow me first to... Um to explain something, because I will talk a little bit differently about the situation than Ukraine. Russia have created an issue, a, a, a subject that will actually result a, a, a very a, a unpredictable results somewhere else. Mm. Indeed, it's an aggression against the Ukraines, but uh, we all noticed that all the European countries are not really ready to take the risk of going into a war with Russia on the issue of the Ukraine. So actually, Russia created an issue. This issue will have certain results worldwide. Uh, what are the results of this new issue? It's a little bit difficult to predict, but at least one of the results that we could predict is uh, the birth of a new era worldwide. I think Russia is giving a message to Europe and to the U.S. Uh, uh, that uh, if you think it's a, a one a side game, no, you have to consider the birth of a new era and Russia is back and we will have to work on these bases together. Uh, the, uh, so uh, creating an event in politics is a, a very clever uh, 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 thing to do. You create an, an event, this event will result uh, a number of uh, uh, sub-issues. So I think uh, Russia will end up uh, 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 bigger, stronger, and uh, the U.S. might, might drag Europe to a confrontation with Russia. But, but Europe is very aware of the fact that, it, you know, the Second World War, when the, uh, uh, the ground uh, of the war was in Europe, the, this, the amount of destruction that took place in Europe required the martial a project that the U.S. financed afterward. So, actually, Russia is creating an event, uh, regardless of what we call it an aggression or anything, but uh, it is an event that will have, uh, 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 you know, a lot of uh, ramifications on the, uh, uh, the uh, general condition of the world. Second, if you want me to uh, to answer on the navigation on the Suez Canal, right. definitely, just like anything else, uh, oh, the uh, worldwide trade will be definitely affected because, you know, the Suez Canal is a link between East and West. So, uh, uh, you know, the tr international trade worldwide definitely will be affected. Uh, it's already the prices are going up. Mm. So, uh, a lot of contracts will uh, uh, will be you know uh, renegotiated. Uh, 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 the uh, you know the uh, uh, the business of shipping will definitely be affected. Uh, a lot of uh, things will be affected. Definitely, the prices will go up uh, in, in all aspects. So, uh, 
and the uh, the navigation in the Suez Canal definitely will be affected, but I don't think it will be affected with uh, with a negative of not more than two percent to four percent. Right. Uh, of course, there are some countries who are worried and very much involved in this crisis. Some European countries and uh, some uh, uh, neighboring countries, um, countries who are uh, against uh, Russia because they depend mainly or who cannot really assess it, know how to assess it because they depend mainly on uh, oh, yes, military oh, yes. aid from Russia. Thanks to God that Egypt is not one, uh, one of these countries because we have uh, diversified our origins uh, considering, considering the military uh, part uh, thanks to President Abdel Fattah Sisi and Egypt has no, um, I mean... Uh, so, so we don't depend on, on a certain I, country to, uh, well, to provide us with... It our has no part whatsoever to be with, uh, to, with or against in that particular crisis, we are clearly, uh, um, uh, closely monitoring the situation and calling for dialogue between the two parts for the sake of humanity and for the sake of not uh, trying to escalate the situation. But, but let us talk about Egypt uh, uh, have, uh, in that particular sense, uh, we know that uh, Egypt have taken uh, its uh, um, uh, reservations and uh, uh, thanks also to the Egyptian administration uh, talking about the repercussions of this crisis. Egypt has reserved the wheat uh, uh, reserves and uh, that is sufficient for more than four months. Of course, still talking about the repercussions of this action on wheat imports. How do you see that on other countries, but not on Egypt, of course, because the, the foresight of our president has uh, saved us uh, from the same fate other countries are going through right now because of this crisis? Well, you see, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, harvest, harvest season uh, for wheat uh, did not really start yet in the Ukraine. So mm. all, all the, uh, uh, the uh, grain that actually are uh, being purchased worldwide today is the last year's harvest. So uh, we just have a reserve of, uh, that will last us four months. In addition to this, uh, within the next 60 days maximum, Egypt will start harvesting the, our local wheat uh, crop. So uh, I think depending on our local crop for another four or five months, this will give us uh, enough time to face uh, if there is any crisis. But, mm. but I, I think uh, this will be a, a good time to really consider uh, uh, planting uh, similar uh, crops or uh, substitute crops for the wheat, like the cassava, which is the cassava is, is a new uh, crop, uh, plant that actually could uh, uh, substitute wheat, and it is very suitable for the Egyptian climate, and it does not really consume a lot of water. And in the new projects, uh, the agricultural products, uh, projects that Egypt are, you know, doing right now, I think uh, uh, diverting to the, the, this plant, which is a cassava, will actually uh, fill the gap between our consumption and uh, the amount of uh, wheat that we uh, uh, import from other countries, including the Ukraine. How do you think the Ukrainian crisis is going to have its impact over uh, the flow of tourism worldwide? And we know that Egypt is uh, number one, uh, um, um, one of the most or top uh, venues for tourism amongst the whole world. And of course, it has all types of tourists. But how will it impact tourism? Definitely, just like any other war, actually. And, uh, we have a lot of... Uh, tourists that comes from the Ukraine and from Russia as well. But uh, because of the war situation, uh, I think uh, definitely the, the touristic activities will definitely will be, uh, will suffer from that. Uh, hopefully, hopefully this will not last for a long time. I don't think 
and that uh, 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 you know the free world would appreciate the continuation of this war. I would like to to mention one more thing, by the way, uh, to, add it, to add it to what I've said in the beginning. Uh, if if the NATO did not take any action in this confrontation, this will be scored to the Russians because this will give a message to the European countries that you see, NATO did not really protect you. Uh, 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 it is a, a war machine that you cannot really use unless you decide to have a massive uh, war, worldwide war. So the, uh, the era of uh, the NATO might be or, you know, will, will, will gradually disappear. Let's see, because it's very interesting. We will see a lot of changes uh, based on the reaction of the countries. But I think one of the main issues that uh, the NATO alliance will actually lose its importance if it did not really intervene in this particular crisis. Mm, of course. That is the main thing. But also, to what extent would the hike in oil prices influence the petroleum sector, you think? Uh, yeah, come back with this again, Gina. I, I didn't hear you. Uh, I was asking, to what extent uh, uh, would you think that the hike in oil prices would affect the petroleum sector? Well, you know, uh, uh, the price, you know, uh, you're talking about oil now, because I have a very bad connection. Of course. Okay. Yes. Well, the, the, definitely uh, countries that produce oil uh, will ha definitely make a fortune out of this uh, uh, war, because the, uh, the price of oil exceeded $100 per barrel. And uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, certain countries will, uh, will, uh, will profit from this. Uh, I think... Uh, also, the products uh, that plants that uh, depends on uh, in running it, uh, uh, its operation on oil or gas will definitely uh, rise, uh, raise the prices of their products. So uh, it's, it's logic, you know, but uh, it's uh, eminent that uh, the, the prices will go up definitely. Mm. How would the world economy uh, be impacted? Uh, or um, um, affected by this crisis in general, you think, in the near future? Amazing. The dollar is going up. Amazing. You know, it's, 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 uh, we, we see, uh, you know, we, we, we are witnessing something very strange. The dollar is going up, and you have to consider that China is the second biggest reserve of dollars. So, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a very strange situation, and uh, uh, I, don't, I, I cannot really predict if the dollar will continue escalating li uh, like this, or, or suddenly it will drop, because uh, the results of this war will definitely affect the dollar. So um, uh, let's, let's wait and see, but the dollar is going up, and... Uh, uh, there is a certain limit for that, and uh, the next step that uh, the, uh, the the U.S. will take will depend, uh, you know, the dollar will depend on that step, actually. Right, and what's your intake of the fast developing, the developments of Russia inside uh, Ukraine? How do you see it? How do you assess the situation? Well, uh, you know, you have to, you have to realize that uh, the Ukraine was part of the, United, uh, the Soviet Union uh, 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 three decades ago. So uh, uh, I think Russia is trying to regain its, uh, you know, its um, uh, ego. Let me put it this way. It's, uh, they, 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 they actually have a revenge. They're ta they, they're taking their revenge, actually. They're stretching their muscles. Exactly, yes, I agree with that. Right. Uh, so it's just a scene of stretching muscles, or it has beyond? Uh, definitely, definitely beyond, it because this would be just a, 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 a very expensive exercise, just to sew muscles. Definitely, the, you know, this event will be invested 
uh, you know, uh, the Russians will definitely invest this. Do you think it's a problem of uh, NATO, ex NATO forces' existence inside uh, Ukrainian uh, land, on the, over the definitely. borders, the frontiers between Russia and Ukraine? Definitely, yes, I agree with that. Mm. Uh, do you think this uh, escalation or this crisis would end if the uh, NATO forces are, uh, would withdraw? I mean, uh, the intervention of NATO will stop, uh, then this uh, crisis will stop? Very similar to the, uh, the uh, Cuba uh, missile, exactly. Russians uh, missiles in Cuba exactly. uh, 50 years ago right. in the 60s. Right. I, think, I think if the U.S., and the Europeans and the Ukrainians declare that uh, there will be an agreement between the Ukrainians and the Russians not to join the NATO for the next 50 years, this will secure the withdrawal of the Russian troops from the Ukraine. Mm. And do you think that will happen? Yes. Right. Uh what is the situation? There are Egyptian expats, of course, inside uh, Ukraine. And the uh, Egyptian uh, uh, foreign ministry is uh, following very carefully over uh, their safety and their existence inside there and uh, uh, making sure that uh, nobody is harmed and uh, that they are they're secure and safe and that they arrive Egypt uh, uh, safe and sound. But, but at the same time, how do you assess the situation of uh, expats inside Ukrainian uh, um, uh, soil in, amidst uh, all these uh, um, uh, I mean, happenings and the crisis that is escalating day after day? So far, what we what we actually uh, are getting in reports right now that uh, all the expatriates and the Ukrainians are heading to the south, away from the confrontation areas. Actually, so uh, all, most of the uh, Arabs and the Egyptians and everybody is moving to the south of the Ukraine, away from the confrontation lines. Actually, so uh, I think the, the 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 war between Russia and the Ukraine is limited to strategic uh, uh, targets, actually. They're not aiming for the civilians. So, uh, so far, the number of casualties that, uh, that we've read uh, in the newspapers today uh, does not really uh, match the uh, volume of the invasion, actually. So I think the Russians are hitting the, the military infrastructure to, uh, uh, to annihilate the uh, capabilities of the Ukrainians to uh, uh, react to the invasion, actually. Mm. The importance of uh, holding a dialogue uh, between uh, both parts. Egypt have uh, on and on called for uh, holding on to the idea of keeping uh, a dialogue, an open dialogue and an open channel in spite of all, these, uh, of all this crisis between Ukraine and Russia and also uh, keeping uh, a channel with Russia also at the same time to be able to help in this crisis. So how important is the open dialogue, uh, even in spite of the crisis between the two parts? I think, yeah, definitely uh, Egypt is taking a very wise stand, actually. And, uh, uh, you know, well, most of the uh, countries will, will agree with Egypt on that. But again, I think the uh, uh, the... The master voice in uh, this particular area will, uh, will be the U.S. and uh, the European community mm. and the Ukrainians. Once they declare that uh, 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 the Ukrainians will not join the NATO for the next, for the next 50 years, uh, this will uh, stop the invasion immediately. And I think uh, the, uh, uh, Russia will lose. Uh, the right to, to continue uh, with their military actions. Once this declaration is made that Ukrainians will not join the NATO, uh, 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 I think this will defuse the bomb and maybe even uh, this will uh, cause the abort and the abortion of this war, actually. Uh, I think the Russians would not really like this declaration right now, though. It, it, this is a, uh, they will score points if this declaration is made right now, but mm -hmm. yet they would like to continue the war at least for the next 
three days at least. Hopefully, inshallah, that they would uh, reach uh, a wise compromise between both sides. Uh, and uh, Engineer Hassan Sabin, uh, our uh, uh, economic and political analyst, would like to thank you so much, sir. You have a beautiful day. And we're going to take a short break and we'll come to continue the breakfast show. So stay with us. <laughs>